Hi everyone, welcome to another video. It's been a while since I've posted because I have just recently returned from a trip to Japan. So today is gonna to be a bit of a mix between a Thrifty Thursday show and tell, um, a couple of things that I picked up from some uh, craft stores in Japan, um, and also I've been tagged by Carol at Crinkled Path. Go and check out her channel um, for the What's in a Name Q&A series. So that's a series that was started by Paper Confessions and BB's Closet Creations. Also check them out. Um, and a lot of us journalists and creators on YouTube um, are getting together and um, talking about how we started our channels and why they have the names that they have. So my channel name obviously is Picky Pulp and lots of people ask me, why did you call your channel Picky Pulp? And so I thought as I'm showing you um, some things today, I might be able to talk to you a little bit about the name of my channel. So before uh, I get into that, maybe I'll put some things out on the table so you can kind of have a look and see what we've got. What I might do is I might put out um, some of the things that I recently uh, got for free. So I did a craft market recently. Um, it wasn't so successful and I think that was due to the fact that there weren't so many attendees of the particular market. I probably won't do that market again, um, but I love going there just to meet other crafters. And I met a, a lady there who um, works at a university library and she let me know that she had some copies of Life magazine that the library was throwing away from, she said the 50s and 60s. And she said, ask me if I would like some. And I said, of course I would. So they are bound copies of Life magazine from the US. They've originally um, come from this university here. Uh, the College of St. Teresa Library. I don't know if that's a university or something um, from Minnesota. So they came all the way from Minnesota and then they got um, given to the University of Notre Dame, which is uh, a university in Fremantle near where I live. And then they recently were throwing them away. So I might flip through these um, while I talk to you a little bit about the reason why I named my store, my Etsy store, and my YouTube channel, Picky Pulp. So, you might enjoy this, just going through the pages. I'm not gonna talk about the pages. Um, I'm just gonna talk about my channel. So, uh, I started with my little idea for an Etsy store when I was working as a teacher in um, in the East Kimberley. So if you're from Australia or Western Australia, you will probably know where the Kimberleys are. They're in the Northwest of Western Australia. They are a very, very remote part of Australia. Um, and I guess for anyone overseas, the stereotypical pictures that you see of Australia, you might think of the Kimberleys because it's dry, it's hot, it's desert. Um, it's beautiful waterfalls and kangaroos and emus and all, all of that stuff. Very, very typical Australian uh, area. And I worked as a teacher up there in a remote community. And this community was um, a predominantly Aboriginal community. So the Walmajari people have lived in that place um, for thousands of years. And so I was very lucky to experience their culture. For anyone who doesn't know, Australian Aboriginal people actually um, have the longest continuing, uh, the lo longest continuing civilization, longest continuing culture on earth. So their cultures span over 45,000 years in Australia um, and it's a continued culture. So what's really interesting is uh, I no longer work as a teacher, but I work at a museum and I get to work with these artifacts from these people. Uh, every day and we actually have 45,000 year old uh, pieces of jewellery and things from Aboriginal people in Western Australia and jewellery that's still worn today so it's amazing anyway I worked as a teacher in the East Kimberley and this school that I worked at was very very remote we only had 25 students on our register and when I arrived, I was given the library as my classroom. Now, being a very remote school, it means that resources don't really get in and out very easily. And so this library had books uh, from the 60s still sitting on the shelves. 
So we were tasked with kind of cleaning this library out. And as we started cleaning out the library, I noticed a lot of these beautiful children's books that were going to be thrown in the bin. No one wanted them. We tried giving them to community members. They didn't want them. We tried giving them to other schools in the area. And when I say schools in the area, I mean schools that are like two hours away by dirt road. Um, they were our nearest schools. <laughs> I lived in a community that was two and a half hours away from a supermarket um, on a dirt road. In the town I lived in, we had a clinic, very small clinic with one nurse who would rotate in and out. And we had a, I just have to apologize for the banging that you might, <laughs> you might hear. That is my partner in the gym, <laughs> uh, smashing down his weights. <laughs> so don't be alarmed. There's no bombs going off in my house. Um, Anyway, so yes, it was a very, very small town. We cleaned out the library. There were all these old books and I decided I had to save them because the illustrations were so beautiful, but I didn't know what to do with them. This was about four years ago. Um, so I took them all into my little house that I was living in at the time. It wasn't a house. It was a uh, donger, if you know what a donger. <laughs> donger is like a very slang Australian term for like a demountable building. Um, and it's, that's what I lived in for a year. Uh, took them into my house and I would sit in front of the TV and just I just started cutting them out. I had nothing to do in this place. Like if I wasn't teaching, if I wasn't working, I was in the compound of the school. I lived next to my classroom in this demountable building um, and I had nothing to do. So I literally would sit in front of the TV and cut out pictures from these old books. I was making bunting for my classroom to decorate my classroom. I couldn't get, there were no stores. I couldn't get anywhere to decorate my classroom. So I just had to use what the school already had from teachers who had left. Um, and so I made Dr. Seuss bunting and I made lots of different things. And I used some of these old books to, um, to, to use them in my teaching. But anyway, I ended up with, I, I tend to ramble when I tell stories. I ended up with a folder full of fussy cuts, essentially. And I was not journaling, I was not scrapbooking. Like I said, I had brought no supplies up with me. I had brought nothing up with me. I simply just sat and cut out these books. Um, anyway, after a year had passed, I took the folder of fussy cuts that I had done over the year home. And I decided that I was going to start doing uh, analog collage. Now that didn't work out because if you know from watching my videos or listening to my videos about my journals, I'm very uh, a bit of a perfectionist and I tend to overthink things. And so creating on an analog collage was not for me because I would sit on the same uh, analog collage piece for a long, long time. And I got a bit bored of that. So I was on Etsy one day and uh, up popped like, shops selling ephemera packs and I was like what the hell like I um I have all of these fussy cuts maybe I can sell them okay so I was like cool so I decided to put some of them up into my Etsy store at the time I did have an Etsy store called Jess Fav Finds um and it was a store that I had sold a couple of vintage pieces of clothing on a few years earlier but I thought I can't really call the store Jess Fab Finds because I find it's really boring. So let's rename my store. So I renamed my store Picky Pulp. And people say, what does Picky Pulp mean? Like, why, why did you call it Picky Pulp? Um, I wanted a name with a bit of alliteration. So it had to be kind of catchy, something you can remember. I didn't want it to be like Paper Co or paper. I didn't want to have to paper in it. didn't want it to have journaling in it. didn't want it to have scrapbooking or ephemera or anything in it. I just wanted it to be its own name that didn't mean that I was um, stuck with selling one particular thing. At that stage, I wasn't journaling. I just wanted to sell this, the fussy cuts that I had cut out over like a year's worth of um, living in the place that I did. <laughs> um, so I thought, okay, what are some words for paper? Because I don't want to put paper in there. And um, I just went on to Google and like, I was like, oh, pulp. Like paper's made of pulp. That's a part of the paper making process. A lot of p -p 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 sounds here. <laughs> um, so let's do something with pulp. And then 
I thought, well, what do I do with this paper? And I thought to myself, well, I'm quite picky with it because I only like to buy vintage paper. I'm pretty fussy with the types of paper that I, uh, that I decide to sell in my store. You know, I have a bit of a rule where things that I sell are usually 1975 and older. And so I thought, picky, picky. And then I thought, and then at that, like I was starting to kind of go to op shops and buy old books as well. Um, and I thought, picky, like, uh, has anyone ever seen the show American Pickers? Like when you're, when you're a picker, you're usually like going through old stuff and picking it out. And so I thought, picky because I'm fussy with the date. Picky because I'm like a picker and I'm going to like, salvage yards and op shops and garage sales and I'm picking out people's old stuff and I thought picky pole like it sounds so good it's like alliteration it's fun it's poppy um, I can tell people that I have a little shop called picky pulp and they're gonna be like what do you sell like I don't know I just thought it was um, a cool name and so picky pulp began and um, at the time I had just returned back to Perth and I was teaching at a high school in Perth and I was really missing my time up in the desert um, but it was better for me to be back in Perth because I was just with my, back with my family and my friends um, and the new job that I walked into was at a, a very very difficult school um, with a lot of students who were affected by trauma and had very low literacy and numeracy skills so I was a teacher in the low literacy and numeracy program it was a very stressful and taxing job on me. Very rewarding, but also took a lot out of me. Um, and so I would just come home most days and to relax, I would just sit at my table and cut out. And still, I hadn't started journaling because at the time I was way too stressed to even think about creating a journal. All I could do and all I had the energy for um, after coming home from work from that job was simply to sit in front of the TV or sit at my desk and cut out things from magazines and cut out things from books. Um, and so that's how I spent my time really. And it was just a mindless activity that I could do because I had no energy left in me at the end of the day to, to do anything that required me to think or creativity. It's quite sad, but during that time I lost uh, so much of my creativity. Like I said, I wanted to do collage art, but I um, just decided that like I had nothing in me at the end of the day to create collage art. So yeah, that's how Picky Pop began. Picky Pop really began as a part of my uh, time being very stressed <laughs> from my job um, and just trying to to have something like hobby that I could do that I didn't have to think about pretty much. Um, you'll be happy to know though that uh, about two years ago, almost coming up to two years ago, I always like to count my anniversaries for this, but I actually quit my job as a teacher. So I um, am no longer a teacher and it is the best thing that I ever did for myself. If you're a teacher and you are starting to hate it, especially during COVID, <laughs> Um, and after COVID and with all the pressures that are put on teachers, um, I say quit. <laughs> that might make me sound terrible, but it's the best thing I ever did. Um, and like I said, now I, I was very, very lucky to get a job at um, a museum here in Perth. It's kind of like a dream job for me. Ever since I was a kid, I have loved museums. I've loved um, curio shops any place where you're seeing things from history, I love. And so that is my daily life. I just get to work at the museum and um, be in amongst history all day long and teach kids and other patrons about the history of the state that I live in and the history of the people um, of our state. And it's just amazing. Like I love it so much. Um, I'm not stressed. And ever since I started that job, about two years ago, I that was when I decided like I had the time and the mental space to like start my YouTube channel, um, start actually creating journals as opposed to just cutting up things and selling them on Etsy. Um, and it's just amazing. Like I just love it so much. So yeah, there's a bit of a story about my channel name, 
mainly I just talked to you about how I started my channel and how I started my uh, Etsy shop. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'd really like, I'd really love to share more of a Q&A about myself. Um, I've just hit like 500 subscribers, which is really exciting. So I'd really um, love to do like a QA. and a So if you've got any questions for me or anything you'd like to know about me, definitely put them in the comments. Um, also, uh, my Instagram, I always forget to plug my Instagram, but if you're on Instagram, feel free to follow me because I post a lot of things on there that don't make it onto my YouTube channel. Um, so I'd really love to get some more followers over there as well. Now let's just continue on with the Thrifty Thursday, shall we? So what I've been showing you in the last 15 minutes is a, um, is a book, found book of Life magazines. And these span from the years of March, oh, not years, the months of March to April, 1955. So very, very cool. Um, and I told you how I got them earlier on in the video. So there's these, which are awesome. I don't know if I want to cut them up. I don't know what I want to do with them, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. I feel bad cutting them up, but they're great. Um, and the lady also gave me this one here, <clears throat> March to April, 1969. So I've got 1955, and then it's good to see how the changes were. Ooh, clear that up. In 1969, did I say? Yeah, 1969. So a lot more color pages, a lot of ads. Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. So many ads. And the lady I got, got them from, she says that she's got like piles and piles of these. Amazing. I'm gonna do a lot of fussy cutting. So a lot of fussy cutting of the cameras. Hopefully being able to make um, some, some fussy cut packs for my store. So that's those. Today I had some time. It's a long weekend here in Western Australia. So I had some time today to go to the op shops. I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't get to spend too much time there, but I managed to find this. It cost me $2.50 and it is a memory, a set of memory game cards. Um, they're kind of thick. So I'm like, are they gonna work if I kind of turn them into, um, I'm gonna turn them into paper clips to put in journals. Um, and now I was thinking, do I put little brooch backs on them and turn them into little brooches and maybe just sell them at the markets or something? I don't know, I just think they're really cute. Like just cute little, like the little bird and the bunny. So for $2.50, I thought you can't go wrong with these because they're just very cute. So. That's those. I feel like they're from the uh, early 70s. What's it going to say? 1966. I was not expecting that. They're earlier than I thought. All right, cool. Now, I also got from the um, op shop recently some new patterns these are children's patterns so i am excited to create three uh children's sewing pattern journals my sewing pattern journals are so popular and i love making them and so i'm excited to have them so there's this one here that will need some um patching here <laughs> but i thought the pictures were way too cute it needed to be saved this one here is in also terrible condition and when the sales assistant um, went to look for the price of them. He literally picked it up and just ripped it. And I shuddered and I was like, please don't rip it. <laughs> um, but it is ripped and it's in terrible shape. Um, so it will have to be repaired before it's turned into a book. And this one here is in lovely condition, apart from the price tag here, the Target $1.20 price tag, but very cute. Love the colors on that one. So there are three new sewing uh, patterns that I've got to create pattern journals out of. I also got, there's something else here. Yeah, there is. Oh, these, that's right. So my cooking journals, which are coming up. If you have followed me on Instagram, you'll see that I post updates of a cooking book series that I've got coming. And these I thought would make good additions. So I got these um, from the recycle center near me. I thought it was great because they were already marked with whisks. 
So they're like perfect, ready to go into the cookbook journals. Oh my God, that's smashing up those weights. Um, and it's really random. They say merry and bright on the back, but they've got a whisk on the front. So anyway, I'll cover up the back, but they'll make great, great little additions to the journal or even just um, little tags for pricing um, when I go to market stores and things. And I got these, these were actually 50% off the marked price. So they were 75 cents each. And they're just little journal tags. Now I don't usually put things in my journals that are like new like this. These are Kaiser Craft ones. Um, I don't particularly like the, um, the look of them. I mean, I love these, these like coffee stained kind of looking ones. This is not really my type of thing. So I might not use them all, but a couple of them might go into my cookbook journals, especially these back few. I thought for 75 cents, it's worth it. So I got two of those. Now, let me show you some things that I got from Japan. Now, when I went to Japan, I was planning on visiting a lot of vintage and antique stores. Unfortunately, um, I was not aware, but a lot of the small antique shops in Japan um, or in the cities that I visited, so in Osaka and Tokyo, require you to reserve, um, like to make a reservation before you visit them because they're usually owned by people who are not doing it as a full-time job. You know, they just kind of have a little shop and they only open it up when you make reservations. So every time I would arrive at an antique store, um, it either required an advance reservation or they had a sign on the door saying like, um, we don't have official opening hours, like just come at random times. Anyway, we're traveling, so we don't really have time to just like keep returning to the same store. So I didn't really get to see many stores. Um, also, they have a lot of vintage clothing stores, which is awesome, but I don't really collect um, vintage clothing and the vintage clothing was very expensive. So yeah, not much in the way of op shops, especially. They have no kind of thrift stores. They, they have a few that sell clothes, um, but they're very high priced thrift stores usually selling um, name brand labels and things. So yeah, no thrift stores, no op shops. But on my last day in Japan, I was walking through a uh, um, in Nara, the city of Nara, there is an, uh, an area called the Naramachi and it's kind of a historical area. And as I was walking through, I came across a vintage kimono store. And this place was magical. It was a mag the most magical shop I've ever been into. You just walk in and it's fabric that looks exactly like this. Um, and a little lady behind a desk with a sewing machine and she's just turning this vintage kimono fabric into creations. And at the front of her store, she had bags of kimono scraps. And I was like, how lucky am I? My last day here, I find a shop that's so up my alley selling kimono scraps. Now I haven't gone through this bag yet. So you're gonna be going through it with me as the first kind of time looking at it. And let's see what I managed to get. This bag of scraps was about nine Australian dollars. So not too bad. People recently have been buying those um, threaded mats that are made of Indian sari silk and things. And they're about $10 from the um, shops near me. And I've been wanting to buy one and unravel it and see what kind of fabrics I can get. But I found this bag and I thought, this is very similar to the types of fabric that you're getting in those mats. So let's see what I managed to get. So I got, oh, this is beautiful and nice and long too. This is kind of orange, kind of 70s, bright 70s fabric with these um, big flowers. They look like marigolds almost amazing this is just, it's just oh my god it's just stunning to wrap a journal in so i've got that oh oh this continues it's like a magician's hat <laughs> uh, i've got this pink and red one look at that beautiful like it looks like um tie-dyed almost flower <gasps> and that's really long too look at that this is tie-dyed tie-dyed fabric beautiful and it's this beautiful silk kimono silk got this little patch here that's very japanese so i'll be creating i'm soon to create after i finish my cookbook series i'm going to start working on my own asian travel journal because i've got way too much uh, a collection of tickets and things from my trips to asia um, and this is the perfect fabric for it so there's some of that now this is just a plain Kind of, I don't know what you call this fabric. It's not so interesting. 
that's a bit of a dud. Let's leave that out. <laughs> oh, you're going to get a dud in there somewhere. Oh, I like this. This looks a bit more modern, maybe 80s? Kind of this lilac purple with these apricot and purple flowers. Beautiful. This is what kind of drew my attention to this pack was this little piece here. It would make a gorgeous pocket. That's really nice. Oh, I like this too. It's double sided. So it's kind of pink and red. Oh, I'm just loving this. Look at this. That is lovely. Oh, and it's just plain on the side. Oh, it's double. Oh, there you go. It's double sided. This lady had um, piles and piles of like 70s um, doona covers and sheets and things. Beautiful, beautiful things, but they were just way too big. I would have never been able to bring them home. So it was nice to be able to bring home a bag of this. That's another piece. Got, oh, this orange one. And I love when the fabric's got this pattern underneath. Can you see that? This pattern that's woven into the fabric. Ooh. We've got just plain old purple. Sorry for the banging. It's probably shaking the camera too. <laughs> I feel sorry for my neighbors. Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> this is beautiful too. It's like so retro, but also so Japanese. Like, oh my God, amazing. There's so much of it. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is like a, um, a satin kind of material. Almost like a night, uh, one of those like nightgown type. Well, if you're wearing a nightgown. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. And then on the back is this brown kind of fabric. I would have loved to buy a, a yukata or a kimono. And what is this? Oh, oh, it's like a little, um, seems like it was like a cushion cover at one stage or something. That's gorgeous. I might turn that into a little cushion cover. Wow, and there's another one. There's two. Oh, I could cushion cover these. I think maybe are they sleeves or something? They look great. Anyway, that's the end of the bag. But how amazing are these? I just wish I bought maybe some more. Um, yeah, I wish I had a bit more of a look around. <laughs> it was a great shop. It was a beautiful shop. And I've just uh, got left some things to show you from the craft stores in Japan. So yeah, didn't find anything secondhand, didn't find any vintage children's books or anything. We did go to a few vintage bookstores, but everything's very expensive. And I also found that some of the vintage magazines and things just had a lot of writing in them and not many pictures. And um, I couldn't find any vintage fashion magazines or sewing books or anything like that. So didn't grab anything like that. But there is a shop in Japan called Daiso and you might have a Daiso near you because they've kind of expanded out um, expanded out worldwide. We've got a Daiso near us. Um, but the Daisos in Japan, everything is 100 or 200 yen. So about under $2.50. Um, and they have a lot of craft supplies. So I managed to pick up some of these thick um, kind of woven washi tapes. So they're kind of these two, I've got two that are kind of Japanese and they're kind of gold. I don't know, if that's blurry, I'm sorry. Is that better? Yeah, oh yeah, that's better. So they're kind of like this gold, beautiful gold shine to them. And they're thick, like that's some thick tape. So that's awesome. Got this one as well. It just reminds me of a kimono, it's beautiful. And then I got this cute strawberry one because I thought making my cookbook journals, that's great. And it's this, it's almost denim. Like it feels like a denim fabric. It's very cool. I also got some fat quarters. These were very cute. I thought they're going to work really well with the children's sewing pattern journals that I might get started on. Ugh, who knows, in the near future sometime. Um, so yeah, just these simple fat quarters which are very cute. 
I also got some stickers. Now you guys know that I don't usually use um, brand new things in my journals, but this is gonna be for my um, Asian journal and I thought like definitely, definitely useful. They're just little, little Japanese Sakura stickers. I thought they were very cute. Look at these little baby envelopes and letter set. I was like, I have to just get it. It's too cute. And it's like, it's like embossed. It's very good quality. I think it was only like $1.50. Um, I got some lovely note paper again with this cherry blossom motif and it's gold, it's shiny. And lastly, I had to get this for my travel journal. These are little um, origami papers with all of the train lines in Tokyo. <laughs> so you've got um, all the train lines that I would have taken. Let's open it up and I'll see if, how many different ones you get. I thought I just have to get these. Like I'm not gonna probably use the, all the paper and it's not really my aesthetic, but it's a nice little memento. So you have the Yamanote line, which was the train line that was closest to us. Um, you got the Chuo line, which was also cool. <laughs> it's just memories, you know. Um, I don't know if I can say that. Keihin Tohoku line. And yeah, these are all the famous Tokyo train lines. So it's a little bit like the London subway lines. <laughs> but I thought I, I had to get them. Like, where, where else am I going to be able to find paper that's got the train lines on it? Um, yeah, so I got that as well. So that is the end of my video today. It was a little bit of a different video. And like I said, um, you know, if you're watching me for the first time, please send me a comment and let me know and feel free to subscribe. Definitely follow me on Instagram as well if you haven't already. I'd love to get more of my viewers onto my Instagram. That would be wonderful. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit more about me and a little bit more about my uh, journey on Etsy and as a creator and as a YouTuber. Um, and yeah. Hopefully I can be with you soon to show you my cookbook journals. I'm hoping to have them done very soon, but I'm very, very busy at the moment. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Check out some of the channels that I spoke about earlier on um, and have a wonderful day. Ah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>